If you want to kind of guarantee yourself, well, there's never really a guarantee, but if you want to really shoot for being at that 400 horsepower mark uh, plus, the best way to do it is to do a, as external wastegate mod, stepping up in turbo size. The, the larger exhaust housing will help reduce the back pressure and then doing the external wastegate mod will help you control the boost a lot better. The front mount intercooler, our Link G4X, ID 1050s, and a fuel pump. You know, get these things to start to perform and do something uh, other than being like 200 horsepower stock at best. Um, on today's episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we got the Andrews four-door R32. Um, it was fairly stock, minus a couple bolt-ons, and uh, he wanted to make some more, some more power. So uh, generally, with what we call the 400 horsepower package, um, with a bolt-on turbo, fuel system engine management, a um, couple other supporting mods, you can make anywhere from 350 to 400, depending on the car and setup. So what this one consists of is a Bolton GTX 2863R from ATP Turbo. Uh, we have a front mount intercooler from Blitz and uh, just three inch catback exhaust. Our Link G4X ECU with a BTI gauge, uh, boost control uh, via ECU on board. And uh, you know, that's pretty much sums it all up. Uh, ID 1050s and a fuel pump. It really doesn't take much to, you know, get these things to start to perform and do something uh, other than being like 200 horsepower stock at best. And, you know, crank the boost up to 18, 20 pounds and voila, and it'll make anywhere from 350 to 400. Uh, generally, the cars that we see that make closer to 400 with this turbo and setup, um, you know, takes 20 pounds of boost or ethanol and, um, you know, We'll, we'll see what it does. You think, uh, I think close to 400. I'm not sure if this will be a 400. Um, I'm hoping it will be, but. Yeah, I mean. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what it does. It'll it be should, close. It should perform pretty well and, you know, do the job. We've um, seen it 400 before I, on the I, setup I, on well, Tommy's. Yeah. And he had the stock, uh, he had the direct replacement and the stock, uh, which we call an intake. So yeah, it's so been done do. before. So let's see if we can replicate it. Um, now we also had Aaron fab up some some stuff here, right? We got the oh, just yeah, just catch a can. turbo intake and then uh, a catch can. So once once you do these bolt-in turbos, um, you can't really or you shouldn't really use the factory turbo inlet as it's you know mushy, rubbery accordion type stuff and the blow-off valve is recirculated into it, and then so is the crankcase vapors. So when you go with a standalone and convert the car over to manifold pressure sensor instead of the mass airflow, you can essentially make a blow-off valve uh, external and vent your crankcase vapors external so the turbo and engine doesn't consume the crankcase, crankcase vap, uh, vapors, and you, know, you can hear your blow-off valve. You also did some maintenance, right? You did the timing belt, new water pump. Yeah. Um, OEM timing belt, new water pump, ARP timing pulley hardware, and uh, AEM 24-1 trigger disc and a factory cam sensor. Um, we, whenever we do any RB with any standalone, the first thing we do is fit the factory cam sensor with the AEM 24-1 trigger disc. The reason why we do that is to eliminate any ECU processing errors in regards to the factory cam sensor. Once you start turning higher RPMs and making more power, the processing of the factory cam sensor can become an issue because it's got 360 slots and they're very close together. It's a small window, so the ECU starts to get confused in processing that data because it's a lot of data at once and factoring things like um, timing belt slap and, uh, you know, whiplash from the engine RPMs traveling back and forth or high RPMs, you just end up with trigger errors every time. It doesn't matter what ECU it is. I've used every ECU on these cars. They all do it. Um, and uh, some cars are better than others and others are not. But the easy thing to ensure that you're not going to have any trigger errors or problems is to do that AEM disc. Now, it doesn't necessarily eliminate the timing scatter side of things, but it at least eliminates the ECU processing side of things. And you've got a car that runs with no trigger errors, which is a big plus. 
Now, why did you go with the AEM instead of the PRP? Um, because uh, the AEM was just a factory drop in for 50 bucks or 30 bucks for the wheel to get inside a factory cam sensor. Um, the Platinum Racing trigger kits do work very well, um, but they are a little bit more costly. And um, although that is a better option to run, in my opinion, for cars like this that are just bolt on cars and need a tune and aren't going to make a whole lot of power, just do the drop in, you know, uh, cam sensor disc and it, the way it works. If we want to do things like make more power and do it more reliably and eliminate the timing scatter side of things, then we would do a divorced cam and crank sensor signal and do a PRP trigger kit. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for explaining that. Um, yeah, that was, that was it. I guess we already changed the spark plugs, did the oil change. Uh, this girl's ready for the rollers. Yeah, I'm interested to see what the four door does. Is, does it weigh more, do you think? Uh, it's a little bit bigger chassis, it's a little longer. Um, Despite the doors being extremely small? Yeah. I don't know, I have a hard time doing that. Go ahead, let's, let's just... Well, it's because the, the door is like shorter, so the A pillar or the B pillar is here, so getting in and out of the car, it's like, I'm like hitting this. <laughs> and then you sit in the car, you know, and then like, it's like right here, so. <laughs> Not my cup of tea, but it's cool, it works. True. But I still find myself having to like lean forward. <laughs> and I feel like the door like this is just like in where I would like to put my body yeah. to sit. <laughs> it's really cool though. Really clean. I, I dig it. Yeah, so we got the, uh, the BTI can gauge. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, we worked with Brandon over at BTI gauges to make our, our own uh, 52 millimeter gauge that when you power up, it has our logo on it. <laughs> there we go. So this is a cool, neat little gauge. It uh, gets wired up directly to the ECU and it allows you to view all data off of the ECU on a single gauge rather than having multiple gauges in the car. Um, I prefer this and like this method over having gauges in the car um, as this is diehard reliable data coming directly from the ECU. And it's something that you can monitor if, you know, if the car is acting funny or something's out of whack, you can scroll through all the pages and look at all the different data. And when you see something that's not in its normal range or something that's way out of rack, um, you should be able to pick up on something um, and uh, kind of go from there. Having aftermarket gauges and stuff, it's, it's cool and all, but it ain't 1990 anymore. You know, and then you start doubling up on sensors because the ECU has a sensor and then your gauge has a sensor, but then the data you get from your gauges doesn't match the ECU. And then it's just, it's just a whole thing, you know. But uh, nonetheless, you can view everything um, off of this gauge. I think it comes with uh, 12 different screens that you can have, which you can all change um, and, you know, look at what you want. Most people leave it on AFR and Boost. That's probably the two most important things that you're going to look at while driving um anything else you can toggle through the screens and set up what you want to look at and uh, anything any sensors or or data that's not uh transmitted or set up in the ecu for instance like this car is not going to be on ethanol so we can see the e percentage ethanol is going to be defaulted to zero um same thing with oil temperature default 32 so i mean um but you know it's a nice gauge that I like, um, and it works. Yeah, it looks nice too. It's like yeah. streamlined. Yeah, me I, personally, I prefer these over the uh, the gauge art style gauges, um, which kind of look like a Nintendo sixty four. And uh, I know Haltech has their own version of that gauge, and so does Link. Um, but uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the way the interface and screen looks. I, I prefer these. You like just just the information. I like that it doesn't beep. Oh, yeah, like you're gauging your car? Yeah, the worst. Pro sport for the win. But, yeah, anyway, that's pretty much a wrap. Uh, we'll get some footage of her on the dyno. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pump gas only, so we'll see how she do. How many pounds do you think you're going to push? How many pounds of boosty? Um, we'll, we'll see it. See, with, with bottom mount internally wastegated turbos, running, trying to run higher boost pressure can start to become an issue. Generally, they'll run anywhere from 1617 to 1920, depending on the back pressure and how everything reacts together. What happens is the wastegate starts, the back pressure starts to blow the wastegate open, so the boost tends to fall off up top, 
and then so the car doesn't make a nice peak power number because the boost isn't there up top but it'll make a decent torque number and the boost will spike on hard because you're trying to get the boost to stay on or come on nice so um, every car is a little bit different some cars respond better than others um, you can try to accommodate that by preloading the wastegate a little harder but then your minimum boost kind of goes up we'll see how the car goes and it, uh, at the end of the day it does what it does um, that's why <laughs> i give that range of you know it'll do anywhere from 350 to 400. if you want to kind of guarantee yourself uh, there's never really a guarantee but if you want to really shoot for being at that 400 horsepower mark uh, plus the best way to do it is to kind of do an external wastegate mod like we did on Kenrick's car, where we essentially uh, plugged off the internal wastegate and welded an external wastegate onto the manifold. Um, because like I said, what happens is boost control starts to become an issue because the internal wastegate doesn't want to work very well uh, with the turbo size and the back pressure that is being generated uh, in this platform. So. Um, doing that, you end up with better boost control. You can control the boost on top end and have it hold and stay on, which is gonna get the engine to produce more power. And stepping up in turbo size also helps that as well. Uh, this is probably one of the most budget-friendly bolt-in uh, genuine Garrett turbos you can get for this platform. Stepping it up to a 71R um, definitely helps a little bit more. Uh, it's a little bit more costly. What and size is this uh, one? I'm sorry. Uh, 63R. Okay. Uh, both GTX 28s. 71R is going to have a bigger exhaust side, which is going to help with exhaust flow. Along with the uh, external wastegate mod, um, you'll be well above the 400 mark. Uh, so that reduces the back pressure, though, in the bigger one. Yeah, the, the larger exhaust housing will help reduce the back pressure, and then doing the external wastegate mod will help you control the boost a lot better than the internal wastegate because. You know, internal wastegate's cool for low horsepower things, but we, once you really start to push past that 300, 350, 400 area, um, the wastegate kind of just blows open and does whatever the hell it wants to do. Um, <laughs> you can kind of tune around that to try and help, but there's only so much you can do because it's a mechanical issue that you're trying to tune around. So ultimately the best thing you can do is the external wastegate mod. Um, get yourself like a 38 or 40 millimeter uh, wastegate and uh, do a little screamer pipe, whether you want it recirculating or external you'll be able to hold boost up top and make a nice peak power number, make some jam. Nonetheless, you know, this combination out the box usually works pretty well to get you anywhere from that 350 to 400 range. Let's get her done. Get her done now. Yeah, I gotta, gotta go do a little shopping and do some shit around. Well, you know it. Than I was hoping. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is, what it is, is. eh? Alright, let's see. I like at least 350. 